28 years ago, Elmira Lito, she had a calling to minister to women in jail. She soon determined that there was a need to assist these women who had found themselves homeless due to a variety of reasons, such as domestic violence, mental abuse, physical abuse, substance abuse, loss of employment, and just other various life traumatic events. This then led to the creation of the Samuels House, which we're going to talk about this morning. Elmira, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank, Thank you, you, Jenna. Thank you for having us. All right, so the Samuels House, Elmira, it was your vision. Yes, I was uh, doing a jail ministry out at the Monroe County Detention Center. And for seven years, they would tell me that they had nowhere to go, that they'd go back to their pimps. Because I kept seeing recidivism where they'd just keep coming back and coming back. And I said, what is wrong here? And they said, well, we have nowhere to go. Many of them were being honest. Many of them were trying to con me. So um, I just started getting this burden where I felt like I wanted to do something. So my husband and I took our, um, I used to do interior design. Mm -hmm. So we took our, our building, which is currently Womankind, and made it into a homeless shelter. We um, got $164 from our uh, first donation and a board of directors, and we took off from there. And this year, we actually celebrate 14 years of, cool. of doing this business. <laughs> so you just said that $164, that's what started this. That's what started it. We had Sheriff Roth, who believed in what we were doing. There was a cry for in Monroe County to help women and women with children. And so the opportunity came, and we felt that we wanted to do it. And so we, like I said, we formed the board of directors, and uh, Sheriff Roth donated from the uh, forfeiture funds $50,000. And then uh, we wrote our first grant and took off from there. Wow. And what has it been along the way? It has What's been, it been like? really uh, in exciting because there are so many women and women with children who uh, really want to make a difference in their lives. They really want to move forward, but because of circumstances, they just have a hard time doing that. And um, at our shelter, we provide the tools there to make them successful. Uh, we don't believe in a handout. We believe in a hands up. We believe that um, everyone should be able to um, move forward in society if they choose. And then there's some that truly don't want to. They just want to. Um, take from the system. They don't want to move forward. And usually those don't stay longer than two to three weeks. Mm -hmm. um, most of our women stay 60 to 90 days, which is the emergency shelter part. And then these last few years, we've been able to obtain grants to build permanent housing. We have Kathy's Hope, which is a 16-bedroom uh, permanent housing home where everyone gets their own bedroom, their own TV, their own bathroom, and they share a common area. And some women have been there since it opened its doors, which was 2007. And it is called structured living because we're still in your life. Because there are some women in society who truly, if they go on their own and they have their own apartment, they end up failing again because of their addictions or their, their uh, issues that keep them from being successful. So we have a couple of women who have been there that long and they plan to stay there until they pass on. Mm -hmm. And that's fine because truly they are being successful by living in that environment. And then last year, not last year, but 2010, we received another grant from the Homeless Housing Assistant, State of Florida, which by the way, they've done away with that grant. And so we would like to see um, the State of Florida re-implement that because it, it really does provide dollars to build housing for people who truly cannot afford on a minimum wage. You can't. So we built uh, nine apartments called Casa de Meredith, which is named after Meredith Higgs. And um, there's seven two bedrooms and two efficiencies for a single woman. But these are truly affordable and it gives a, a family an opportunity. And then this last year in 2012, we took one of our administrative um, apartments that because we have a, a four bed, four complexes over at um, Ponsani Housing and we took it and built it uh, to where we were able to provide a family of six uh, affordable housing for them to live there. So mm -hmm. we did that in December. 
Awesome. You, you give all these women a second chance then yes. to get back on the right track. And now, do you provide them with counselors along the we way? We have a kit. Immediately when someone comes, we always start them off in uh, Mary Spots' Women's Center, which is the emergency shelter portion. And what we do is we want to get them stable. We have case managers. We have a team approach. No one is black and white. Uh, everybody's case is different. Um, we can't do it as a cookie cutter uh, case management. So we have staffing with them. We find out what their goals are. We want them involved just as much as we are involved with them. And like I said, it, we provide the tools. We have workshops. We have um, people come in from outside that are volunteers that work with them, show them how to dress so that they go. We have a full-time job developer who works with them to, uh, that's even there in the morning to make sure when they go out for interviews that they are properly dressed to be successful to, to get that job. So we, um, we work very closely with the client and honestly if a person wants to change their life they can do it. Their tools are there. It's just a matter of them saying I'm ready some people aren't ready on the first time. Sometimes it takes seven to eight times. Mm -hmm. But we don't have a um, three strikes, you're out. Mm -hmm. What we do is we keep give the person the opportunity, is it time, you're ready now for a change. And some of our clients have been 15 years old with little babies. Mm -hmm. The oldest was an 85-year-old grandma who was uh, being locked up in a closet every day. And um, her son-in-law was locking her in there and her pastor found out and so she came and lived with us for three months and got her life turned around and um, she got into the senior citizen and why they're there we're constantly looking for avenues to uh, help them with their improve their lives so and we don't it's not free we do charge client fees we do charge rent and the reason for that is life is not a free mm -hmm. it's not free it's we have to get people to where when they go back into the real world that they recognize that it's real. It, I think this is just incredible, everything that you have done for these women. And for more information on the Samuels House, they can check out the, your website. I know they can also give you a call if they have Absolutely. any questions. Absolutely. Elmira, thank you for being on with me this thank morning. Thank you for having us. We really appreciate it. I'm going to take a quick break right now. I'll be right back. Stay with me. There's more to come.